this is my first template and I will just break down my basic workflow on the top I have all my tracks so there's the stereo beats and then we have a drum loop if there's a drum loop in my stems and then there's kick snare hi-hats and then we'll go down on the list open hat tams per symbol that's the drum bus and then we have the bass and the sub bass main loop alt loop stabs and so on these are all the tracks that i occasionally or usually find in a mix session and then there's the vocals the verse the hook the backing vocals and the ad libs and finally comes the send effects. I separate them into two categories, reverb and delay for the instrumental parts, the, the instrumental and reverb and delay for vocals. I keep them separate. And then everything runs into buses. I have a drum bus where all things drums go, whether it be only a single drum loop, then that will be the only track going into the drum bus. Or if there's a kick, snare, hi-hat, and so on, it will also go into the drum bus. The bass bus usually consists of only one or two, maybe three tracks, which is the bass and the sub bass. Maybe there are variations in the bass in the duration of the song, maybe, who knows? Everything bass goes there. And then I have an instrument bus, which is occupied by the chopped samples, the guitar, the piano, saxophone, synths, stab effects, transitional effects, uh, brass, and so on and so forth. And then we have the beat effects and the vox effects, which are two separate buses. And then we have the lead vocals and the backing vocals, two separate buses for those. So when I have a good static mix, I can tweak the mix using only the buses, which rids me of a lot of overwhelm when I'm mixing because, you know, as you can see here, we're counting 63 separate tracks, including the master and the mix bus faders. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot to, to keep in mind. Having all those tracks arranged in categories makes it a bit easier to tweak and mix. This is my standard mix template. The beauty of this is that there's no plugins here. It's empty. All I have is, is my send effects here. Those are the blue blue ones here. Those are my sends. And they go into my send uh, channels, which are here, starting with the drum room and ending with the Vox Fatten. And so here I would need to insert plugins. And that's the disadvantage of this template. I need to spend time and energy loading up plugins where I need them. But it's also liberating because it's it's a blank slate. I can upload plugins only when I need it. I don't need all the clutter with many plugins inserted. Another advantage of this template is that I can track directly into it because there's no latency issues with the plugins. And so that's that's my standard template. Everything instrumental is rooted into the beat boss. And everything vocal related is rooted into the Vox bus. And if I have cuts and scratches on a track, I will root that as well into the Vox bus, the vocal bus. And there's a separate mix bus for both vocal and instrumental send effects. And then all these three beat bus, Vox bus and effects bus is rooted into the mix bus, which again, in turn is rooted into the master bus. The beat bus in essence is the instrumental. So if I need an instrumental version of the mix, I can just solo the beat bus and bounce it and I'll have the instrumental. If I need to bounce the acapella, which I almost always do, I'll just solo the vox bus. So that's the beauty of it. With have, having it this organized makes it easy to bounce different versions that the clients would wish for. Okay, that's my standard template. Now comes the next template and this is the digital template. The beauty of the digital template, whereas the standard template where there are no plugins is beautiful for tracking and exporting things and having a blank slate. While the digital template is, is the one I might, I think I use this the most, especially when working with clients where they send me zip files and I will open them into a folder and I will drag it in. I will 
almost always use this one because this is the fastest one when it comes to mixing. Here I have everything set up. I'll start with the tracks. So for example, the stereo beat has on it already an equalizer and a compressor. I'll never put much compression on an already processed beat. In fact, I would, would turn this off and not have it running at all. But it's there for just in case. And if I have a stereo beat, which which often is the case when I'm because I've I almost always work with rappers, so so they will send me the stereo beat, and I will just click on the rest of the the instrumental part down to the sound effects two, and here comes the verse as you can see, and I will just delete it, and I I have removed a lot of clutter, but sometimes they send me the stems for the beats. Maybe just the drum loop, the bass, maybe the buses only, the, the drum loop, the bass and the instruments. Or they will send me separate kicks, snares, hi-hats and so on. And then I will just drag them in here and delete the stereo beat because I won't need it. But here on all channels, I have the Pro Q3. And I have the Pro C2, which is FabFilter's all-round compressor. It does everything it does it has a clean version a classic opto it has several algorithm algorithms and it's flexible and i like it it's a nice channel strip it's simple easy and then further down the line i have something special for the lead vocals i have the 1176 this one from universal audio and i have the soft tube tube tech compressor so those two are my go-to's for vocals. I often use LA-2A as well, and some distortion units, and I have a whole other video about my favorite plugins for vocals, and you might check that out. <laughs> and the funny thing is that my favorite plugins is not even in this template. I would load up them separately, do it a bit more manual, especially when it comes to the lead vocals, because the lead vocals are special. They're the money makers, right? So they're, they're green, right? <laughs> because money. Okay. And then we have the sound effects. I use the Valhalla Vintage Verb. That's my go-to for everything reverb. And I have the Echo Boy from Sound Toys, which is my go-to for echo and delay on, on everything, right? There are limiters on every bus, the drum bus, the bass bus, and so on. And when I'm mixing, I often insert other compressors or clippers. It depends on the song. On the beat bus and on the vocal bus, which is in essence the, the instrumental and the acapella, I have a VU meter just to check levels as I go, checking that it doesn't go past zero. It's for my gain staging. And that's a completely other video about gain staging. It's, it's one of my favorite hard children doing proper gain staging. I also have on the beat bus and the vox bus an, so an instance of Novatron, which gives some sweet sounding compression and distortion or saturation. And it's very flexible and it gives some sweet vibe to it. And then there's the effects bus, which also have a limiter just to control random peaks along the way. And then there's the mix bus. And here's my digital mix bus, which is a bit bit analog as well. Starts off with a Pro Q3 and continues with a Bliss from, from UBK, Kush Audio. I love this plugin. I evangelize about this plugin a lot. In this case, I use it mainly for compression, but also maybe slight saturation. And the EQ here is very musical, but I also often tend to use my Mog EQ on the mix bus. And then the classic Clipper from IQ Multimedia. Then another Pro C2, just to keep things dynamically in place after all this EQing and clipping. And finally, a limiter at the end, the Pro L, just to keep things steady. And then uh, comes my master bus and I, I like to do mastering separately. I have own templates for that, but I like to to bounce a polished version of the mix. So therefore I have uh, another clipper, an Oxford inflator plugin, 
which gives some other types of sweet sounding compression and clipping. And then finally, another limiter. It's just for keeping things in check. And now, as you can see, my mix has gone through several limiters and clippers and compressors and every one of them doing just a fraction each. I don't like plugins that are overworked. They can push a little each. And on the stereo out, I have three meter plugins. The first one is the is the Klanghel VU meter. And then comes the Isotope the Tonal Balance Control. And finally, I have the Insight plugin from Isotope also. So this gives me a lot of information, a lot of theory about my practical work. Because when I've done a mix, when I've sit with a mix for maybe an hour and a half, I lose perspective. And this plugin here helps, the Tonal Balance Control helps me regain a bit of perspective it might give me some hints that maybe in the 300 hertz area you should need to do some tweaks there's a bit of a dip there or maybe i don't need anything it gives me some information that i can evaluate and check if and see and also this one i use it mainly the insights i use mainly for checking that my lufs is in check i like to have my mixes around 10 maybe 8 to 10 it, it makes for enough loudness to compete with other tracks on spotify and so on they say 14 but i have in my experience 8 to 10 is more on point yeah so that's my digital template Finally comes my analog template, and I'll start by showing you, giving you an overview. It's the same thing as the previous two, except one main difference. And uh, let me let me show you the main difference first. So I have all the tracks. I don't have the fab filter now. Now I use the SSL channel strip, the legacy one, because it doesn't take that much a processing power from my UAD chip. I have six or eight with the Apollo Twin. I have eight sharks and it's really eating away. Let's let's see. For this template only, I use about a little under half of my processing power. But when I start duplicating tracks with UAD plugins on it, it will accumulate and maybe I don't want to run out of processing power. Okay, so, so the UAD SSL channel strip plugin is on every track and the trick here is that I have a rule <laughs> I have a rule for this template I can't insert more plugins the plugins here are set I can't remove anyone and I can't add anyone I can duplicate channels but I can't remove or add plugins what do you think about that strict rule but it keeps me it keeps me check and i have to find solutions it's like working with hardware that's why i call it the analog template i, I like to pretend that i'm sitting with an ssl desk and with the rail faders writing them tweaking the eq the compressor on each channel and that's it that's all i have and additionally, I have some in the back, I have some racks, I have some LA-2As and 1176 and some CL-1Bs and I have some fancy schnancy uh, mix bus processing uh, processors. And now let me show you uh, a neat thing. So since I can't add any compressors or equalizers, I have uh, some send effects here. I have one send effects that's called LA2A, which has a stereo LA2A, which in, in real in the real world world would be two units of LA2A. I have the same for 1176, CL1B, the Fatso, and the Pultec. So let's see here. LA2A. We have the LA2A. Oops, we have the 1176. We have the TubeTech CL1B, we have the FATSO, and we have the Pultec Equalizer. So whenever I want to add some compression and vibe to any track, I can just use the send, the, the send level on that specific 
send channel and get some sweet compression and from the pull tech some eq and all those all the settings on these boxes are set so i have the the 1176 is set to a fast attack and the the la2a is it doesn't have those controls but it has the vibe the tube tech is set to medium on attack and release so this is kind of like a middle ground and the fatso has a lot of vibe to it with the tranny and all and and the Pultec has some sweet bottom and some sweet tops added on it. Right. So, so these are like my sound effects and they can go on any track or any bus. And then comes my, my buses. They are also equipped with the same channel strip, the SSL channel strip, the legacy one. And then comes my beat bus and my Vox bus. Here I have cheated. I have the FabFilter Pro L, the limiter on the, the beat bus and on the on the vocal bus. And on the FX bus, I have only the... Uh, I could have had a limiter there as well. I should have, actually, come to think of it. And then, finally, or almost finally, there's the, there's the mix bus. Here I have a G bus compressor, which is like the mix bus, you know, everything is summed into, into the bus compressor. And then comes a Pultec EQ, which is inserted directly because, you know, if you already have two Pultecs, you can always buy two more, can't you? So I did that. I put it on my mix bus. And then I have really deep in my pockets and I've purchased a Fairchild 670 sweet sweet box I'm kidding it came free with my interface but you know in the real world it will be like digging deep inside my pocket and finally it goes to tape the Ampex ATR 102 and then the mix bus hits the master channel and this is like my mastering channel. This is this starts off with a very musical EQ, Siemens emulation, vintage EQ with four bands and a drive knob from Sound Toys. Really sweet EQ. And then the Shadow Hills mastering compressor. What I like about this is I use it in dual mono. So I compress a bit differently on the left and the right channel, giving some stereo width. And it's also very sweet sounding and it has different flavors and vibes. Nice one. And finally into a Pro L. A bit of a cheat there, but I couldn't help it. I had to have it. And other than that, no metering except for some Klanghelm on the beat bus and the vocal bus, but nothing else. I've been a bit strict. I just want to show you one other thing. On the send effects, I've used the Lexicon for ADL. It's like a hardware emulation. And for Echo, I've used the Echo Boy because I didn't have any true analog emulation for this one, but I've used the Echo Boy Junior, which is simpler and more basic and a bit more restricting. So the whole concept of this template here is to restrict. And for the, the Vox Fattener, I have used actually the same tape machine that I use on my mix bus. And uh, this is the MPEX ATR 102. I use it with the tape delay setting, as you can see. From there, I can tweak to make the delay hit a bit different on each side of the air, very fast and very subtle. So I use this subtly, but it fattens up the vocal really nice. Yeah. And that's it for my template. What do you think? Which one is your favorite? The basic one without any plugins, but with all the buses set up and everything ready to go? Or did you like the digital one where I have all my buses set up and I have all the plugins loaded up, ready for more plugins, of course, but I have all the basic plugins in check? 
Or did you like this last one where I pretended that I have a SSL console and I have the bus compressors going on and everything is analog emulated and very restricted and I have this rule that I can't uh, insert other plugins and I can't remove any plugins. What do you think about that? Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. And finally, if you like videos like this, hit subscribe and don't forget to download my mixing cheat sheet where I have a 10 step workflow. I've broken down my mixing workflow in 10 steps. Check that out and I have 15 cheat codes for unlocking amazing mixing abilities. You might take one or two or three or 15 golden nuggets from there and apply to your own workflow. Check it out. It's free. The link is in the description. And uh, without any more to add, I think that's it. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.